But today I want to talk to you about some things that I think not only will you find interesting, but for the most part what we've done is that we've actually talked about these things just a little bit this morning already. And that is continuing on the topic of facing the giants. And this, this time together that we're going to have is going to be something that I actually extended from speaking last night at our Saturday evening service, and that is one bite at a time. How do you deal with your giants? How do you deal with your problems? How do you deal with the challenges that you're facing in life? What is it that you do when things seem to be so difficult to be able to get around? How in the world can you be able to succeed? It seems to be overwhelming, but yet, the, great, the age old question is this How do you eat an elephant? What's the answer? One bite. Say it again. One, bite. One more time. One bite. So that's how you deal with an elephant. If you have to eat this elephant, or you have to proverbially in the marketplace, one of the happier statements right now is you got to eat the frog. And what does it mean to eat the frog? That means do your most difficult tasks first. Get those things out of the way. Use the two-minute rule. When you use a two-minute rule, almost any task that you undertake can be done in two minutes. Procrastination takes hours, but tasks take very short, uh, short amount of time. And so what do we do this with this elephant? We eat this elephant one bite at a time. So now how did David actually deal with this giant that he had? Here it was that he comes out onto the field and out in this field is this giant whose name is Goliath, nine foot six inches tall. Can you imagine having a neighbor that was nine six when you're five three? Somehow there's just a little bit of low self-esteem that's going on because this guy has grown twice as much in the same amount of time as you have. And so here it is. Here it is, he's nine foot six inches tall. David is just this little guy. He's 17 years old. And all of a sudden, he goes and sees his brothers. When he sees his brothers, Goliath comes out onto the field. Goliath begins to roar. And he says, you give me someone that I can fight against. Give me somebody that I can actually deal with. And when you give me this person, what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed them to the birds and to the animals. That's what I'm going to do. And Goliath roared. And everybody was scared. And for over one month on a daily basis, they ran away from Goliath. So when David goes down to see them, here it comes on day 31. And when day 31 comes... And Goliath comes out and he roars. Everybody starts running again and David is running with them. Do you realize that the people that you run with really determine whether or not that you're going to have courage or whether you're going to be afraid? They're going to determine whether or not that you have a great marriage or whether you have a poor one, the people that you're with. They're going to determine whether you're going to actually go to a place that you're going to go to a whole nother level in your life or what you're going to do is you're going to stay the same and become worse just like they did. The people that are around you, they're really determining that, whose voice becomes great. So David, here he is, he runs with all of the armies of Israel. And when he runs with them, all of a sudden they say, Oh, and by the way, did you hear what was going to be given to the man who killed this guy, Goliath? And David said, Well, what is going to be given to him? He said, Well, he's actually going to be made rich. And he's going to be able to marry the fox. And she comes complete with all of her Barbie dresses. And then... His whole family is going to be free in Israel forever. And David said, let me check on that. So he goes over and sees his brothers. When he sees his brothers, he says, hey, what, what, what about this? And they say, oh, we know you. We know you. We know the sin of your heart. You can't do this. You, you don't know anything about war. All you know is about Taking care of sheep. That's all you know about. 
You've just been helping daddy. That's all you've been ever do. Nee, nee, nee. You're just a mommy's boy. That's all you ever. So all they did was they just made fun of David. David said, what have I done? Actually, guys, what have I ever done to you? So he asked someone else, what is it going to be given to the man who destroys Goliath? He said, he'll be made rich. He said, because Goliath should not be taunting the armies of Israel. He said, did you hear what he just said? Did you hear him say that there's no God in Israel? Did you hear him say, did you hear him say that? And they kept running. And that's exactly what people do. I would rather die in faith than to live in fear. Because everybody's going to die. And where you go, you're going to live forever, so why not? I mean, if you get a white rope, the Bible says you do. You get a white rope, and you're like in your Mid-twenties. That's pretty good. Can you imagine how old you'd be according to God's clock? It says a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. You might be like an hour old. I mean, as far as God's concerned, you look like a baby. I mean, to others, you know, but, but to God. Just think of that. And so David just asked someone else, he said, he's going to be made rich. He's going to be able to marry the fox. I think her name was Barb. And then his whole family is going to be free. They're never going to have any taxes. They're never going to have any bills. They're never going to have to deal with anything financial all the rest of their lives. And David said, I'll do it. Why? Because I'd rather die in faith than to run with you guys. So let me give you a few things that happened with David, and then we'll just talk for a few moments. The first thing was is that David feared as all the others who were facing the giant. He feared as all of the others who were facing the giant. And then he heard of the reward. The third thing was, he spoke to the giant. You know, I kind of figured something out about Goliath. You're either talking to him, or he's talking to you. I mean, it's true, isn't it? I mean, the giants, they either talk to us. Well, I don't know if I really believe that. I don't know if I believe in, you know, I don't know if I believe all that stuff, you know, positive confession. Well, but now, right now, the whole world is telling you, <laughs> it's so funny. Do you realize that right now, one of the biggest things, one of the bigger things that psychiatry is discovering is that religion can be an escape from mental illness. Right. Hey, I was a nut <laughs> till Jesus showed up. When Jesus showed up, all of a sudden he took all my almonds away. I woke up the next morning and I thought, wait a minute. What just happened to me? You see, you can be delivered in a second's time. So David, he just, you know, he spoke to the giant because when you're speaking, you can't hear your problem. When you're speaking, when you're speaking, you're in control. When you're listening, whatever's talking to you is in control. And so here it was. He, he then decided to start running at him. 
not run from him. Well, I just don't want to get, I just don't want to get into an argument. I just don't, you don't have to try to get in one. One's coming. You can have it today or you can have it in a year. You take your pick. When you get it in a year, it's going to be a lot bigger than it is today. Isn't that true? Some of y'all, you like that? Some of y'all put off your conversations a little too long, didn't you? Then all of a sudden it, ta- it took up 10 extra years of your life. And you lived that whole time in those 10 years in misery. Don't look at me with that stone cold face. This is not stone cold ice cream parlor. Or cold stone, right? <laughs> stone cold ice cream. You can tell I don't particularly care for that. I never really liked soft ice cream. I never did. I only really liked when the ice cream was, was a little bit harder than normal. I think when, if you really like soft ice cream, you, you should come up the next prayer line. That's, <laughs> we'll just leave it. <laughs> you just, just uh, we're going to have like a prayer line for soft ice cream. You love soft ice cream. So David spoke to the giant. He started running at the giant, based, but not based upon his ability. You see, how could some five foot three character fight this giant? Saul gives him all of his armor, straps it on. David's kind of walking around. Here the sleeves come down, because remember, Saul was head and shoulders taller than any other Israeli. So David's walking around with this armor and he's supposed to go out and fight this nine foot six character, right? He said, I can't. I can't do this. And at the same time, some of, some of you have gotten too close to your giant. Because when you get too close to your giant, he can hit you. How, have you ever seen? Have you ever seen somebody? I mean, it used to be on on TV all the time. But did you ever see somebody who who actually put their hand on somebody's head, and they would just kept swinging, <laughs> and they couldn't hit them. They were this far away because they had their arm up. That's how close you let the giant come. You never let him come close enough to be able to hit you. Ow! Don't you know that hurt? That hurt. He hit me. I know. Don't let him get that close. Wake up before he comes close to you. You can feel him coming. You know he's coming because you can hear his voice. A person's voice always travels much further than how big they are in their body. So here it is. So David starts screaming at the giant. Why was David screaming at the giant? So that the giant would be afraid? Oh no, so he couldn't hear the giant. The David said, you come at me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Well, you know, the Lord, God of hosts, of whom I am and whom I serve. Did he say that for Goliath? Oh no. He said that for him. And then he just decided to do the Steppenwolf song. Get your motor running. (laughs) So he just started going after that. Just He went right down, man. He just meant, hey, you come at me. Hey, hey. Because the more you scream about it, you can't hear him screaming at you. So he's running. He didn't stop. He took the rock. On the run. He just gets this thing going. And all of a sudden. Goliath just goes. Now what's David going to do? He told him he was going to cut off his head. Well how could he do that with a stick? That's what Goliath told him. He said you're going to come out with uh, me. With a stick? Because he had his 
shepherd's staff. So David shot his mouth off. What's he going to do now? He doesn't have a sword. He looks around. The Bible actually says that he went around Goliath's body to get his sword. Because when Goliath fell, his sword didn't come out. When Goliath fell, he was, he was laying on it. So he goes around his body, gets his arm under his body, and yanks his, his sword and kills Goliath with his own sword. He didn't kill him with his. You can kill your enemy with his sword, not with yours. You can destroy that lawsuit with their sword, not with yours. You can destroy the attitudes in your office or in your business with their attitude, not with yours. Not by you getting worse. You can destroy the misunderstanding in your home with your friends with their attitude, not with your attitude. You see, I'll never forget, I'll never forget when Peter and Jesus are walking. Peter's thinking, hey, me and Jesus are cool now. Everything is really great. Until Peter opens his mouth and says, what are we going to do about them? You see, isn't it interesting that Jesus didn't tell him, well, listen, let me tell you how you need to really work with this situation that you have. He didn't. He said, what is it to you? You do what you're supposed to do and stop thinking about what somebody else is supposed to do. You know, that fits everywhere. It fits in, in your marriage. It fits with your kids. It fits in your home. It fits in your relationships. It fits in society. We keep trying to do Everything else that other people are going to do. You know the one thing, you know, society kind of is kind of screwed up right now, don't you think? It's kind of weird. I mean, it's kind of weird. We're kneeling, we're standing, we're talking, we're tweeting, we're doing all of this crazy stuff that we're doing. I, what I haven't figured out is how what we can do is that we can talk about things that are so bad when everybody that's taking a knee in a football game is making millions of dollars every year in a country they say has no opportunity. Right. That, that is one thing that I have a little bit of a challenge with. Hey, we got stuff to do, don't we? We got stuff to fix, don't we? But don't say that ain't a start. It's just that, because for me, I don't make millions. It's a funny thing. Oh, we all got these issues. There is not a person, you have to understand hell. Hell wants to make every person in the world a victim. Everybody. So that instead of us being able to have a united front to be able to win in life for people, every one of us have our own particular cause. And when we have our own cause, then all of a sudden, none of us get along. Won't get along about anything. We'll never win. We just won't make it. And we can't be victorious in anything that we do. And so what I want to do is I want to actually just talk to you about five things. Everyone say five things. Five. I want to give you five things in five minutes. <laughs> Whether I will or not, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> but this one thing I know is this. Is that every giant that you face is a giant to destroy you and the time that you have left on the earth. How can you deal with the giants that you have to face? I don't care who you are. I don't care where you came from. And, and, but I do care where you're going. Where you came from doesn't mean anything. Where you go means everything. Okay, so here they are. Five things. Everyone say five things. Five things. Say five things. Five things. Five things. That doesn't mean you're going to go get a hamburger either at Five Guys. But here's five things. Number one, shaking off symptoms is a key to defeating the giant of sickness and disease. I'm sick. 
Well, okay, what did you do? Well, I prayed. Oh, no, 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 no. Sick people go to work because you're healed. Amen. If you're healed, you go to work. Yes. Well, yeah, but I sniffle. That's okay. Healed people go to work. Romans 8, 11 says, if the same spirit, but if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, he that raised Christ from the dead will bring to your whole being, yes, even to your mortal body, new strength and vitality. Boy, that's really true. The same, say, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside me, and he that raised Christ from the dead has brought to my whole being, yes, even to my mortal body, new strength and vitality. Who himself knew no sin. He was made to be sin for me. He took my sins in his own body on the tree that I am dead to sin. I'm alive to right standing with God. And with his stripes, I was healed. Number two. Fear is the greatest giant you'll ever face. You must destroy it. You cannot live with fear. You cannot live with compromise. There is no place where the two of you can live together. Fear must be destroyed. It must not be tolerated. Fear must be destroyed. Say fear, fear. Must, be destroyed. must be destroyed. In Psalm 118 verse number 6, the Bible tells us this. He said, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Say the Lord, the Lord. is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? This will answer everything. In your home, in your business, man, between people, the Lord is on your side. Say, the Lord is on my side. Yeah, what do you care about people? What do you care about what flavor they are? What do you care about where they came from? What do you care about it? Because you're either going to be a Christian or you're going to be your ethnic group. That's what you're going to be. You know, I'm a Jewish American. I'm a Spanish American. I'm a Creole American. I'm an African American. Well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been there? Where you been? Indiana. <laughs> You've been to Indiana? Oh, yeah, the dunes. <laughs> I bet you the dunes. Come on. You know what? That, that's just the devil anyway. Forget about it. I talked to forget about it this morning. I said, I said forget about it. Because I don't know his name. All I know this guy's name is is forget about it. Because every time I talk to him, here's what he tells me. So guess what I call him? Forget Just forget about it, okay? Just forget about it. Don't even think about it. What are you thinking about? Hey, what are you spending your time? Destroy fear. Does fear destroy you? Say, I refuse to fear man, and I will not be snared. But I will put my trust in the Lord, and I will be kept safe. For God has not given to me the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Man, that's you. What has that got to do with whether or not that you were born on the south side or the north side or the east side or the west side? It don't matter. That, no, for me, I was born in California. And you go, oh, born in California. What do you care? They're, they grow more nuts in California than any other state. Do you understand that? It's really true. They got more nut trees. And I can say more. Number three. Get on God's financial track and put the giant named Lack behind your back. Get on God's financial track and put the giant named Lack behind your back. Man, just, you know what? I, I understand Man, things are tough. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm facing difficult times. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm having trouble. Oh, yeah. Man, you don't know what I'm going through. I know. 
I can, I'll tell you what, people think, man, he's prophetic. Are you kidding me? I just know what the Bible says, and I just tell you what it says. You go, how do you know that? <laughs> because it's no big deal. All of us face these issues. You know, if you make $50,000 a year, you have a $50,000 statement being made to you. You make $100,000 a year, you have a $100,000 statement being made to you. You make $200,000 a year, you have a $200,000 statement uh, that's being made to you. And the statement is the same. You don't make enough. You don't make enough. No, here, let me help you about money. The greater the problems that you solve, the more money that you will get. Somebody said, well, what I want to do it, when, when I grow up is I want, I want to be a, an accountant. Okay, do you understand? You want to be an accountant. Okay, do you understand how much accountants make? The average accountant's salary in the city of Chicago today is $37,110. Somebody said, oh, no. I think I'm worth twice that. Well, then you have to find a different field. If you're worth twice that, do something that actually brings twice the amount of money than being an accountant. Because you can't be an accountant and do the other just as well. Because the average pay is 37,110. That's exactly what it is. So, so what about being a bookkeeper? Well, yeah, you can be a bookkeeper, but just remember, a bookkeeper is 32,577. I'm worth more than that. Solve a better problem. Lack goes away the greater the problems that you solve. The more problems that you solve, the more money that you'll get. You say, yeah, but you know, I don't really care if I make money. Yes, you do. Don't try to tell anybody that you don't care about money. Well, I don't really think money is really important. I didn't say money was really important. I just said until, uh, unless you got it, you will be thinking about everything else except for what you want to. Because things get lean when you ain't got the green. You know what I mean. So, it all came out of this one right here. But Isaiah 48, verse number 17, the Bible says, He says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord, your God, which teaches you to profit. Yeah. God's going to teach you how to profit. Say, man, I need to solve greater problems. I need to be better at the office, man. I need to give up my attitude. I need to all of a sudden start becoming valuable to the people that are around me. Then all of a sudden what happens is, is people start saying, you know what, I'd like to give you a raise. Do you know why people don't get raises? Is because their attitudes don't change. If you decide to, sol to solve greater problems and you decide to take on more, all of a sudden what happens is that more really comes. Mm -hmm. It just comes. More business comes. More opportunities come. Responsibilities come. And then more money comes. It's really true. If you want to deal with lack, the first thing you do is give up your attitude that you have done enough in order for you to be able to make more. How many of you business owners understand that? Okay. How many of you workers don't? Everybody would raise their hand. You just don't want to be the one. Because it's true. The more problems you solve, the more money that you'll make. I search every day for doing something more than I do right now. Every single day. I am spending everything I have in order to be able to do more than I do. Because I understand that the window in life begins to close. And when that window closes, you can't do anything, can you? You get caught in the position that you're in. I'm really teaching you right now. Number four. Say no to the giant of tormenting thoughts. You have to say no to what you're thinking. 
People live tormented. In Luke chapter 10, verse number 19, take a look and see what the Bible says. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and, serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20, he said, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not. Don't rejoice over the fact that you can actually deal with this. He said, but... Don't rejoice over the fact that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That's what you rejoice about. One of the things I can tell you this right now is that remember why the Savior came. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel unto poor, unto the poor, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for what? The spirit of what? You want to get depression out of your life? Just start praising God. Let me tell you about symptoms that come. Symptoms, symptoms. When you deal with symptoms, when symptoms come to your life, in order for them not to set as truth in your life, you must reject them immediately. They may initially jolt you with fear. They may initially do that, but after that particular point, as far as you're concerned, they don't exist because of what God said. God said, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. God said that he didn't give me the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. God said that I can speak to mountains and they would remove and be cast into the sea. And I don't doubt in my heart, but I believe that those things which I say, do you understand that you say something more with your thoughts than you can ever even say with your, with your mouth. What's being said? Yeah, but see, I didn't, I didn't say it. I, I didn't say it. Well, I know. I understand that you can't set hell in motion except with your tongue. I'm well aware of that. Okay? I understand that. While at the same time, you can convince yourself of everything negative in your entire life the moment that you consistently listen to the problems that you face. Don't listen. I can always tell when I'm talking to a person whether or not that they're listening to me or they're listening to what they have inside them. And I want to go, hey, over here. Come over here. Hey, come here. Come here. Listen to me. Oh, wait a minute. That's because you're not listening. I, I understand this. Believe me when I tell you this. I'm not smart. I've just got beaten up a lot. And I can tell you how not to get beat up. Number five, lastly. I guess I went more than five minutes, right? Let go of the worry giant. Forget about it. Just forget about it. Well, yeah, but you, you said, forget about it. Well, yeah, but, but what am I going to do? Forget about it. Well, I have to do, I have to, you know, I got to deal with it. I mean, you know, people are going to call. Yeah, yeah, but then you can tell them whatever you need to tell them and then just forget about it. What can you do about it? The only way that you can make one hair white or black is with just for men. I told you that last week. You know, that's the only way that you can actually do it. Hey. You forget about it. You can't make it better. You can't make a person better. You can't change their attitudes. There isn't anything you can do until God moves inside the situation and inside that other person and inside your body and inside your mind and inside all of that. There's not anything that you can do about it. So let it go. Let it go. Philippians 4, verse number 6, the Bible says this. Don't worry about it. I wish it would have said forget about it. <laughs> he said, don't worry about anything. He said, but... Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and just thank Him for all He's done. He didn't say thank Him for it. He said thank Him for what He's done. Start remembering all of the things that God has done in your life. Look at you. How have you come so far? Do you realize that every person in this room has risen to their level of failure? Every person. The reason why that you are so good inside your life today 
you are so good at what you're doing is because you have been able to raise yourself through all of those ranks that you could be successful in and you just now have run into that level of life that you're not successful at. That's why you're going... That's the reason why you're doing that. Because you just ran into the very thing that you're afraid of the most. And that is not being enough. Every time that I have a setback, every time that I'm facing an issue that I have to face, my response is this. I'm only being beaten because I just don't know. I don't know. What I don't know is what I'm getting, getting beaten in. I'm not being beaten over the things I know. They call that sin. I'm not being beaten over what I know. I'm being beaten over being tricked. I'm being tricked all the time. It's stuff I don't know. Somebody knows this. And I'm going to find out. What's it going to cost you? Nothing less than everything. And what do they call that? risk. And what do successful people do? They risk everything that they are in order to be able to go where they've never gone before. Never get happy with where you are. Do you realize that where you are right now you used to be very happy about? Where you are right now you used to be elated. Oh, you were so excited. You were so blessed. You were so happy. You were so happy. But yet, now you're not. Why is that? Because you were created to progress. You're created to go forward. We need progress. We don't need digression. We need progression. That's what we need. Take some lateral moves until you can find a way to be able to get up. All you need to do is play Candy Crush. Take some side moves. And then you can actually go back to, you know, do old school and go back to Pac-Man. And just eat up the turf. But right now what you've done is you've just run into a situation that you don't know any way around. Somebody knows it. He said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally and doesn't ever kind of make fun of you because you asked for it, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord, for a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Start making your entire life in between you and God instead of in between you and other people. It's between you and God. It just, listen, this is me and God. My body is between me and God. My attitude is between me and God. My whole circum set of circumstances is between me and God. It doesn't have anything to do with that other person. If I'm not getting along with that other person, it's got something to do with me. It has nothing to do with them. And it's as much as is, is possible with me, I will live at peace with all men. That's it. Amen. I'm not going to be a contributing factor to any horrible situation. I'm not going to commiserate in life. So let's go over those things one more time. Number one. Number one, shaking off symptoms is a key to defeating the giant of sickness and disease. The Apostle Paul did it in Acts chapter 23. The Bible says that when that serpent stuck to his hand, he shook it off into the fire. You just throw the devil back into his own fire that he's created for you. Number two is that fear is the greatest giant that you will ever face. You have to destroy it. Don't deal with it. Well, I'm just so afraid. Okay, then deal with that. Deal with the fear part. Don't deal with the situation. Deal with the fear. Well, you know, things could actually blow up. I don't care. Job was a smart man. He said, naked came I into the world, naked I'm going to leave. I could care less. I don't care. I don't care. So deal with fear. Don't deal with your situation. Deal with the fear that comes because of it. 
because fear will come in anything. You just hang a new ornament on the tree, don't you? So deal with that fear. Number three, number three, get on God's financial track and put the giant named Lack behind your back. Just get on the track. This is what God said do. This is what you need to do. You need to sow. You need to love. You need to care. You need to be everything you need to be. You just do it. You just go out there and you make it happen. Number four is that say no to the giant of tormenting thoughts. Just say no. Revelation chapter 12 verse number 11 says this, and they, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by what? The word of their testimony and they forgot about it. They loved not their life to the death. They forgot about it. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by what I say. And then I just forget about it. Forget about it. And then number five is let go of the worry giant. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 6 and 7 says this, Humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may exalt you in due time. By throwing all of your cares, the NIV, interesting, says cast all your anxiety on him. What are you worried about? Well, yeah, but so what? Don't rejoice that you can actually get over your situation. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Rejoice about the important stuff, not this temporal stuff. Because one day you need one thing, and then tomorrow you need something different. You forgot about the thing you needed yesterday. You still need it, but you, still, but you forgot about it because you got another need. And all the devil wants to do is get you to go from one thing to another with worrying about it. Just worrying about it. Say, I'm not going to worry about it. All worry is over. In Jesus' name. Amen. Did you get something out of the word this morning? Praise the Lord. Thank God for the word of God.